Hello everyone, Gabe here from the Uplay team, and as you can see, we are still at Gamescom, and that means we get to talk to cool people. One of those people we got to talk to today was Corsair to talk about their love for RGB and what some of their partnerships with Ubisoft really mean. So, let's get to it. Hi everyone, we are here at Gamescom and we have found someone who wants to talk about video games and video games adjacent things. What is your name and who do you work for? Uh, I'm Adam Jackson and I am the Game Partnerships Manager for Corsair. Cool. I like Corsair stuff. We use it a lot in our PCs. <laughs> um, what does that mean for your day-to-day -day work? Uh, basically, I manage the relationship between all of the game developers uh, and Corsair and kind of maintain that open line of communication and work on awesome things. What's your hot take on RGB? Uh, I love it. It's at the core of what we do. If I could make everything in the world rainbow, I would. All right, I gotta ask, what kind of keyboard switches do you personally use? I uh, MX Silent, uh, Cherry MX Silent. I like to be kind and courteous to my neighbors at the office and at home. Uh, whenever you use something like a blue, it's a lot more clicky clacky, loud, and uh, I try to be respectful of my surroundings. Yeah, Gabe, who's holding the camera right now, does not give any shits. Uh, he's just all about the clicky things and the, and the office doesn't, doesn't care at all. Yeah, yeah. How about the mouse? What are you after? Uh, currently, uh, I really like uh, Night Sword RGB. Uh, I am 55 and I was an avid Glaive user as well, but we're constantly coming out with new products uh, and you know, currently I'm stuck on Night Sword, so. Any secret mice that you can't tell us about? Oh, you wish, <laughs> but maybe. All right, what are some of the cool things that you are getting up to at Gamescom this time around? Uh, well, for me personally, it's a lot of meetings. Uh, this is kind of where I can meet face to face, not only with you know North American partners, but Europe and Russia and everywhere else. Uh, but uh, we also have a public demo as well, so showcasing products, uh, Hydro X, new technology, all that kind of stuff. And uh, you know, it's a way to kind of get some cool prizing and stuff to fans as well. So, what's kind of the newest thing that Corsair are working on that we know about that you're most excited about? Uh, I think probably Hydro X. Uh, I think that. You know, in itself, it's something that, you know, people thought we would never do, uh, and then we did it, uh, and uh, it's been really well received, and uh, I think that's the, the newest thing that we're kind of showcasing. So we actually reviewed a bunch of the Corsair mice recently, and we uh, gave some away on our channel. I never knew about the different kinds of grips that people make mice for. Yep. Do you know what kind of grip you use? Uh, yeah, I'm more of a claw grip, uh, but, you know, we kind of, uh, we have a, a wide variety of mice currently, and we're ever expanding that role because everybody has their own kind of look and feel, big hands, small hands, and so, you know, we try to make a mouse for everyone. Yeah. I even had no idea that claw grip was a thing. Really? Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's just, you know, your personality, you know, it's your personal take on it, right? So whether you're palm, claw, uh, we, tr we have am ambidextrous mice, so if you're, you know, want something that's a little bit more neutral in the middle, uh, you know, I think it's, it's just trying to find something that everybody can use and be comfortable with. Okay, so I tried to do a claw grip on a my, on a mouse one time. How do you do the claw grip? Can you can you show me right now? What does I mean, it, what does it look like? I mean, it's it depends on obviously the mouse and the size and all that. But basically, you're not resting your palm on the mouse. Okay. You're just kind of like above it, gripping it like a claw. So, right. Did you know. you, does, does your hand get sore doing that? Uh, no, I mean just because it's natural, right? It's what you're comfortable with. So that's how you constantly strong hands. Oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a strong guy, so you know. We talked a little bit about RGB before, but it seems that the quest to make everything RGB is ongoing. If there was one thing that you could make RGB that isn't already, it doesn't have to be practical, it just can be anything. What would you make RGB that isn't RGB right now? Ooh, a uh, toilet? You know, the ultimate throne? No, 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 probably, probably not. Uh, no, I think, I think chair. Gaming chair, I think that's a that's a big request that everybody has had. Uh, is, is the chair? You know, we we make gaming chairs. We have T1 Race and T2 Road Warrior, uh, and everybody's like, is it RGB? Is it RGB? And so I think uh, if if we could you know make a product RGB, that's probably what I would choose. That's really cool. I hadn't initially thought of that before. I mean, my mind first goes to like putting in like an RGB trim on it. But if, even if you did like like a you know how cars have like down lights. Yep, yep. Like the subtle, the subtle base light. Yeah, I mean, well, now that I said it, I, I mean, I'm gonna have to make it or something, right? You know, <laughs> that's how it works. Can I patent the whole downlight thing? Can I get like, you know, you know, buy we'll and gone? Send you, you know, one if we ever do it, and you can review it. Yeah? Yes, deal, <laughs> deal. Obviously, you, you guys make a lot of peripherals for all types of PC things. What's the craziest thing you've seen someone do with one of your products? 
Oh, that's that's easy. Uh, I had someone uh, create uh, for our uh, Dominator RAM uh, with uh, Capellix. Uh, they actually did Tetris on the RAM sticks. So it was like four sticks and you could actually play Tetris and watch, you know, as each light goes down and you build it up. It was, it was you, crazy. You could play it and not just like watch an animation? Yeah, no, you actually could control it on the keyboard and, and have it, but on your memory, it was insane. So what's next for Corsair? What are you guys doing to push the world of peripherals forward? Uh, well, I can't go into details, um, but you know, obviously as Corsair, we're constantly coming out with new products. Uh, and one of the things that we really try to focus on is like user feedback, listening to our fans. Um, you know, we hear the requests, uh, we hear the feedback. So we're constantly trying to make products that, you know, answer a lot of those questions uh, and, you know, continue to be at the forefront of RGB and all the things that you can do with it, so. Any crazy requests that you're definitely not gonna try? Uh, you, mm, there, there's a couple, um, but you know, I, I, I never want to say never because it's Corsair and it's RGB, so you never. I mean, I guess you never know. So, yeah. How important are the PC gaming community to shaping the way your products get made? Do you have much interaction with people and? Uh, take that feedback and implement it in new products? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have an extremely large engineering team, but I mean, that's at the forefront of, you know, without without our fans, like we're, we're not successful, right? So we constantly taking feedback, uh, whether it's online, through social media, through support, or here at events, uh, it's constant interaction, feedback, um, improvements, changes, requests. We take all of that in and we're constantly listening and trying to create the best solution for, for every category. So you were just telling me before that you've been at Corsair for three years. Is there a moment that sticks out to you as one of your favorite moments? It doesn't have to be product related, but you come to a lot of these shows. Is there anything that sticks out to you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, obviously a stereotypical answer would be my first day, um, which was also obviously amazing because, you know, I'm a hardcore PC gamer. So being able to work at Corsair is fantastic. But I think my marquee moment would have been uh, the Far Cry 5 event. They had a big press event. Um, and obviously we were uh, lighting integration with IQ. We were a partner for Far Cry 5. Uh, fantastic game and they brought us out to a ranch uh, and you know we got to do a bunch of cool activations I got to pet the actual boomer the dog it was amazing uh, and then the uh, main antagonist of the game flew in on a helicopter gave this big speech and uh, there's a bunch of other cool activations so hands down my favorite memory so far with Corsair so you've been working with Ubisoft on a few things what can you tell us about those technical partnerships? Yeah, so uh, obviously we started with Far Cry 5, uh, and then we recently hit the Division 2. Uh, and with that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big play. We really respect Ubisoft. I mean, they make some of the world's greatest games, uh, the narrative, story, graphics, it's all, you know, at the edge of everything. And we wanted to be a part of it. Uh, and I'll also try to amplify that with uh, lighting integration through IQ and our products, uh, and really kind of give uh, extra incentive to our fans to be able to experience even more than what's going on on screen and kind of expand it into your living room. So, uh, I mean, they've been fantastic partners uh, of ours for a while. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to continue to evolve what that looks like and uh, give more to our fans. Perfect. What is your favorite game? Of all time or? Of all time, doesn't have to be a Ubisoft game. Time. Oh man, that's, that's a tough one. Um, I would say Far Cry 3 actually is just, you know, without being, you know, biased to Ubisoft or anything, uh, they are a fantastic partner, but that game was incredible. The villain uh, in that and just the storyline was absolutely fantastic. Uh, and then I'm also a big fan of the Divinity series with uh, Larian Studios. So a uh, huge fan of that. I'm a big D&D nerd as well. So, you know, it kind of ties in a little bit, so. How do you feel about fifth edition? Uh, I, I mean, I like it, I play it. I have way too many campaigns. I won't go into how many, but uh, at Corsair, we actually had uh, a two and a half year long campaign that just wrapped up and we had two different groups in that. So we have a lot of fans of that kind of uh, tabletop play as well at Corsair, so. Sorry to derail, but the last question I have, what was your latest character in your D&D &D campaign? Uh, he was a tiefling sorcerer, uh, sorcerer, excuse me. Uh, his name was Morthos. Same as Gabe. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's. I mean, I'm I'm I love magic and being able to cast spells. And uh, we had reached the end campaign literally two weeks ago. Uh, I was level 19, all, and then uh, basically had to kill a god, uh, and it was incredible. And you know, after that long with that story and you know friends and sitting around a table, you know, it's a lot like gaming. It's just building those memories and being able to tell those stories. So yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today for a bit of a chat, and uh, hopefully we see more products that don't need RGB in the future that somehow have them like a chair.
Well, now I have to make a chair, so, you know, that, that's how that goes. But no, thank you so much for having me. It's been awesome, and, uh, you know, here's to more stuff. All right, thank you so much.